Welcome back to my channel where we're digging deep into understanding Delta file logs. We're going to talk about transactions in this talk. So it's a deeper dive. And of course, the file logs for Delta are the heart of Delta Lake. So let's jump in. But before I do, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Where you get direct access to me, specialized content, and more. Now, of course, I should say at the beginning, there is a disclaimer. Any code I put out there, it's great for you to use and demonstrate, but you need to vet it and make sure it meets your needs. And I take no ownership of the risk if you use any code. So in this video, we're diving into the Delta log a little deeper. We're going to be talking about, as I mentioned at the beginning, transactions. In order to do that, what I want to do is load a transaction file. Now, the link to the notebook and data is in the description, and I'll also put a link that shows you how to load files to Databricks if you haven't already learned how to do that. The file here we're going to be doing is dim sales transaction one CSV. What are we doing here? We're going to be loading it into a Spark data frame, SPDF underscore sales territory, sales terror, trans one. Use Spark read, format is CSV, saying option header equal true, meaning use the first row to get the column names for our data frame. We're also going to say let Databricks infer the schema, meaning it will figure out what the column types should be based on the data it gets, and then we'll load it in. Now, as before, I'm not going to actually execute the code in this notebook because when you're doing Delta file updates, it's a very dynamic and moving thing. File names get changed and renamed, and the log files keep getting extended. Most importantly, as we'll see, the parquet files that make up your Delta file completely change depending on what you do in terms of transactions. You'll see that closely, but the file names have these GUIDs in them. And if I hard coded them and then tried to run through it again, they'd all change on me. So I can't do that. So here we have our data frame. We're saying write mode overwrite. And what I want to do is save it as a Delta table. I want to point out that previously we saved our master file as just a Delta file, not a Delta table. And the distinction I want to make here is that a Delta table is in the Hive Metastore or Hive Catalog for Databricks, really Apache Spark. And that means that if I just reference it in a select statement and say select asterisk from this table, it can automatically find it. But the way we did this is we took our master file and saved that as only a Delta file. The Delta files themselves do include the metadata, the column names and types in it. That's great. But if I were to try to select against it without telling it where it's located, it would fail. In other words, Databricks wouldn't know where to find it. And that's what creating it as a table does as opposed to saving it as a Delta file. So that's the distinction I want to make. But this time for our transactions, we will make our lives a little easier and save it as a table. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but let's continue what we're doing. And we can see here now we can select against it and it finds our rows. And what are we doing here? We have four transactions. Two, we can see here, are meant to be updates. So our company has joined with the Federation, and as such, we are now going to update one of our sales territory groups to be the Federation. But wait, the Klingon Empire took one back. <laughs> so we have one that the Klingon Empire has adopted. And for the sales territory three, we're going to delete it. And we'll mark that by having the word delete in caps in two of the columns, as you can see here. And this row does not exist yet. It's owned by the Klingon Empire, but we're going to insert it here. And so now we can see we've got an update, an insert, and a delete. Next, what we have is we're going to do a merge. We're going to say merge into Delta, and then we have this DBFS file store data set. We're going to use an alias for that. Now, I just mentioned that our master file is actually not in the meta store, and therefore we have to tell it where it is. And that's what's going on here. We're saying merge into Delta. That's our master table, really, and we give it an alias. But when we say we're going to be using, this is our source of transactions, strand one we don't have to tell it where it is because that's in the Hive Metastore. We're going to say on. What does that mean, Brian? Why are we saying on? We're saying on because we want to tell it how to match the transactions to the master file so it knows what to update. So we're saying match it on strands one sales territory key is equal to T-E-R-R, -R, sales territory key. So it's going to match transactions to the sales territory master file. It says when matched and strands one on the transaction side, the sales territory region is equal to all caps delete. Remember, we had that in the transactions, then do a delete. And when it's matched without that extra condition, then do an update where we just update the sales territory group with the sales territory group in the transactions. 
And if there is no match, then just insert it. Now, I do want to call attention to something here because we have two different conditions in which we get a match. The one that is more specific, this one, we're adding an extra condition, that needs to go first because if we were to do this one first, it would do an update across the board. It would just say, oh, I got that, great, do an update, and it would never look for additional criteria. So we have to start with the most specific filter criteria first, then to the less. That's why we're doing that there. We can see we have four affected rows. We had four transactions coming in, so we expected that. We have two updated, one deleted, and one inserted. And in this statement, we can select the rows from our master table. And we can see here, we've got all our rows here, great. All the way from the Federation now was updated in row one. The Klingon Empire is now the sales territory group of sales territory two. We can see that between two and four, and this is sorted, three is gone, so that's good. And finally, we can see number 99, the Klingon sales territory has been added. So now that was just to show us how easy it is to do a merge transaction. It's a nice way to do it because you can do insert, delete, and updates all in one statement. More information at this link. So let's take a look at the Delta log and see what it looks like after our little transaction here. I mentioned before, the files with the CRC extension are just really check digits to make sure things were created correctly. There's no errors. So you don't really have to worry about those. We can see we have our original log file, which is zeros on and on, <laughs> zero dot JSON. And then we have our newest creation, the zero, zero, zero something one JSON file. So we now have two different log files. Let's use describe history to see what we now have in our transaction log. So you can see here, we've got our latest transaction here and it's expanded because i was browsing this earlier but that's our merge it shows what we've got going on here and if we go a little further over we can see what's happened we have a number of rows copied eight number of rows deleted one files added two hmm that's strange we just did a merge transaction and we got two new files that means two new parquet files were created hmm I'll have to see what's going on there we can see updated rows were two. So we've got a nice little summary of what just happened. And you can see in this row, right? You can see in this row, this is our original insert transaction. You can see it says right. So we already looked at that. We now have two transactions that are visible in our transaction log. And we can just use describe history to take a look at those at any time. So let's take a look at the parquet files. What do those look like now? Do we still just have one file? So using the ls command here, we can see now, no, we have three different parquet files. Now, wait a minute. We did one transaction update, right, the merge. We have three parquet files. That seems a little strange to me. It surprised me a little the first time I did this. We have our original, right? We had the original parquet file. And I'm not really surprised that it would have created a new parquet file, right? So it's got to do something and it can't update the original. So you might have thought it will just sort of take your changes and create a new copy, a single parquet file with everything in place. That's not actually what it did. Make things a little easier. I'm going to take our master table, which is really just a Delta file currently, and I'm going to catalog it in the meta store. So let me show you how we do that. We just have to say create table. If not exist, that way I can make this rerunnable. Dim sales territory. And then I'm saying use Delta and I give it the location. And we've done that before where I've done this with like schema on read. You have like a CSV file and you can create a table around it. And the CSV file is just already there, and you describe it, and now you can use SQL against it. It's kind of similar here, except remember, Delta tables can be updated, and you can do a lot of things against them. But one thing in common between those two methods is that because I'm adding it to the Metastore from a different physical location, right, somewhere out there, in this case, it could be in ADLS storage, it could be blob storage. In this case, it's actually in DBFS, but it's not something I did as all of one data table creation as I did with my transaction file. What that means is it's an unmanaged table. This can be a good idea because an unmanaged table means that if I were to say drop table after I created it, it considers the external data, that Delta file to be separate from Hive. And it will not delete the physical files if I drop the table. Not so for that transaction file we created. Because I created the transaction file as a Delta table, it will actually drop the transaction data underneath it if I were to drop the table. So unmanaged and 
managed can make a big difference. And I kind of like cataloging, if you will, the file after I've created it a little more because I don't really like the idea that somebody could accidentally just say, hey, drop this and boom, you could lose all your data. And mind you, that data could be you know anywhere. Now, until recently, when you did a save as table, it automatically cataloged it and stored the data in the Hive Metastore itself on DBFS. However, they have added a new feature. I just saw it. I've not tried it yet. But the new feature allows you to point to where you want it and still make it a managed table. However, I would be careful about using that because it would be a little risky for the reasons I pointed out. So here, now that we've cataloged it, we can just refer to it as we did the transaction file earlier. You can just say select asterisks from DIN sales territory. And I just did two just to show you it really can be reached now. We don't have to keep pointing to the table. Let's talk about the problem here. You cannot delete or update rows in a Parquet file. So how does Delta Lake update the Parquet files? What does it do here? Well, it actually doesn't. It creates new Parquet files and copies the original data, but then drops and updates the other rows as needed to create a new version. The new log file will point to the new Parquet files. So it may remove old Parquet files and add new ones as part of the transaction updating process. And it's important to understand that. I'm going to talk a little more about that. So if we look here, we're going to look at our DIM sales territory folder, and we can see three Parquet files here. Let's look at this a little more closely. Let's take a look at, and I had to kind of figure this out after I did it, tracing the files. You can see these names. These names, every time you do something, it creates new files, they change. So if I were to completely you know, drop everything and start over, all of my Parquet files would end up with new names that use this kind of GUID in the middle, which is why I'm not running it. <laughs> so you can see here, I want to display the first Parquet file, the very first when we initially created our file. So we can see this one file has all the data from our original load. What about after the update? If we look at one of our other Parquet files, we can see that it contains row four through row 11. It doesn't have our transaction rows at all. Hmm, interesting. And then we look at the other, the third parquet file here, and we can see it has the two rows that were the update transactions, and it has the 99. Now, three was deleted, so not surprisingly, you go up here, you don't see row three. It was just sort of dropped off on the copy, and the changes and insert were copied into another parquet file. So the takeaway here is it did something kind of interesting. When you applied your transactions, it took your insert and updates and actually put them into a separate Parquet file. Then it copied what was already in the other Parquet file, the original, and dropped off what was deleted and just let, copied the other rows as is. So let's take a look at the JSON log files, right? Let's take a look at these. What do they look like? Now, I'm going to start at the beginning, the original one, just so you can see you know, where this started at. You can tell it's the original because it's all zeros, right? Zeros and then dot JSON. And I'm using my function to display it. We can see that it's got, you know, all this information here. It has schema information. It has some of the statistical information, like min and max of the various columns. And most importantly, it has the add. This is the add of the file. It's a single file. It took all the rows, all 11, and just added them to this parquet file and good to go. That's the first transaction. If we were to ask, and we can using something called time travel, just for version zero, we would get just this one Parquet file as it was originally loaded. So let's list the log files that we now have. You can see we have the zero one and we have a new one, one. So let's look at transaction file one. I'm going to just display that using my function I wrote earlier. It has the commit info, user ID, all that kind of interesting stuff. Number of rows copied, number of rows deleted, number of files added. All that stuff here and we can see our first thing it does is it's removing our original parquet file so again it's trying to say okay what files should be part of my new version it says well that old one that's got everything but it's the original load i'm going to push that aside so it doesn't remove then it says add the first new file i created new parquet file here and add another one here so when databricks goes to look and says to give you version one of your delta table what do i need to do it says, well, drop off that one. I'm not going to include that and include these instead. So what are the takeaways here? Well, we can see that each Delta log file is like a file manifest with some instructions. As we saw in the second one, 
delete the original file and then add these new two so that it can figure out what to put together. And then the first one, it just said, I just added this. That's all you need. So when you're looking at versions, it just needs to look to the version delta log file to figure out what to do. The log file includes additional information like the statistics and metadata to help it find things quicker. So it's kind of there for optimization. And uh, the protocol I mentioned earlier is so that like if you decide to change your Delta protocol later, it will know what to do and it will show a change as that happens. And if we want to do time travel, which I'll demonstrate later, but time travel allows us to access any version that we've been through as long as we've retained the logs and files to go with that version. And we don't really have to do that. We don't want to do that forever, but we'll discuss that in yet another video. That's it for this time. Hope you like this. Please like, share, subscribe. Till next time, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Thank you.